Everybody knows the feeling, and it's not a pleasant one. You take a little certain length file into the canal, you rotate it, you engage it, and then when you take it out to examine it, to your behoovement, it's a little bit shorter. Now, is that magic? We wished. Well, the fact is that all metal files, stainless steel or nitai, have a tendency to break due to torque or cyclic fatigue. Today's tutorial is about file separation and how we can avoid it. We will also discuss some of the tips and tricks for removing files. But first, let's take a look at a case that I ran into in my office. This mandibular canine was referred to my office for evaluation and potential retreatment and removal of a broken instrument. The general dentist told me that a S1 protaper broke on very early on during the instrumentation in this tooth and could not understand why this happened. As you can see, the instrument is broken almost all the way to the apex, but fairly up high here, almost at the CEJ level. And our goal here is to try to remove it. First, let's take a look and see why this file may have broken. Let's take a look at the board. Okay, now let's take a quick look and find out why is it that a tooth like this would have an instrument broken at this high up in the, um, in the canal. Now, normally we all know that instruments tend to break a little bit further down the canal or in the midroot, and they don't break up this far up. This usually means that there was tremendous amount of torque or pressure on this tooth, or rather on this file, that caused it to break up this high. So, what can cause that? Well, when you look at the tooth here on a little straight up, directly on a periapical uh, x-ray, you see that it's a pretty straight canal, and this pretty much surprising. Now, granted, there's always a chance of some uh, instrument um, um, issues such as manufacturing problems or some kind of defects at times that could cause this, but this is usually not the case on the case of a canine that it looks straight like this. Now, let's take a look and see what could be the cause. So let's do a, just a quick little outline of this uh, of the tooth here. And as you can see, if you look at the outline, is that there is this little line on the uh, distal and also one on the mesial aspect of the tooth. Usually when you see this radiographically, you can pretty much assume that there is some kind of a, a depression going on in the, in the tooth. So that if you were to look at the tooth in cross section, what you would end up having is you would end up having, as opposed to a root canal that looks just like this, you actually end up having a figure eight kind of a can uh, canal in cross section. And that is due to these little depressions on the two mesiodistally that is pushing the uh, dentin in and it creates this little kind of a, um, a narrow space that's also called a corridor space. Now the problem with these corridor spaces is that if they're wide enough it's not a problem but sometimes when they get fairly narrow then it creates a little fissure here, and the tip of your file can accidentally get lodged inside this uh, fissure, and then it very quickly breaks off. Now, we all know that there are pretty much two reasons for uh, instruments to fracture, nitai instruments, rather, to break. And that's number one cause is usually due to torque, which means over-torquing the file. And what torque is, is basically angular uh, or torsional kind of uh, pressure on the file. So if it's the same as if I were to, if I had a little file here, and if I were to grab it by hand uh, and then rotate it on top, then what would end up happening, it would break off here. So that's torque. And then number two is cyclic fatigue. And what cyclic fatigue is, is the same thing you see if you take a little hanger and you just you know, with the little thin wire, and you just go back and forth, and you bend it back and forth, back and forth, and you end up getting a metal that is, starts to kind of, you get grain boundaries here, and the metal gets fatigued, and then it just snaps off. Torque is usually due to pressure, it's some kind of anatomical issues, or too much um, contact with the surface of the wall, or pushing the file, uh, and those are the reasons why you would end up breaking a file due to torque, and cyclic fatigue is in situations in which you end up overusing a file or having, you know, a file that you end up using more than once or twice or three times and the file, every time it goes into the canal, it gets bent a little bit and it ends up getting uh, fatigued and the metal just breaks off on you. And that's due to cyclic fatigue. So here, due to these little um, um, 
depressions, it's a very high chance that this kind of got caught in a little uh, fissure, and that's what caused uh, this corridor space, and that's what caused the file to break off due to torque. Now, at the same time, you add the fact that we're taking a look at this tooth in a direct, straight-on fashion, but if we were to take a look at it from the side, what we would see is possibly a very curved kind of a, um, anatomy here. So let's take a quick look at it from the side and see what we have. And yes, see, you can, it looks like a straight uh, tooth when you look at it from uh, a directly front um, orientation, but when you look at it from the side, you can easily see that it could very likely have a fairly good uh, curvature to it, and that would be invisible on a straight-on periapical radiograph. So that's something to be aware of, and you see that oftentimes in these types of canines, especially when you have this type of a um, uh, configuration with the uh, depressions. Now, if the access opening in these is very limited on top, you end up having a problem. So it's a good idea in these cases to always uh, have your access opening extended a little bit more coronally so that you end up reducing the curvature that goes onto the file. As opposed to having your file bent quite a bit, you end up reducing the curvature by having extending your axis a little bit further up. So what also happens whenever you have this kind of corridor space is that you end up um, having a little bit of a line here. That's that fissure area. And that fissure area is where you end up catching this file and it breaks off right over there. So now we've broken the file. Now we know why we possibly broke this file. The question is how can we retrieve it? The idea for retrieving a file like this revolves around preparing a little bit of a platform space. And what a platform space is, it is basically, so if this is the broken file and cross section, you need to create a space around it so that when you are going with your ultrasonic tip, you can put your ultrasonic tip directly on the sides uh, of, the t uh, of the broken instrument and then vibrate it out. Because otherwise, it would be very, if, if this is in a canal where it is quite tight, then it's not, you're not going to be able to vibrate the file out. What you need to do is you need to give yourself a little bit of space, um, and usually you want to do that space more on the um, direction where the file is flexing to. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, take a look at this. When you have a nighttime file which has shape memory, when you bend it like this, right, it wants to straight, straighten out on top. So what happens is that this file is actually exerting pressure in this way on the buccal aspect of the tooth. So if we were to create a little bit of a space here buccally, like that, then we would be able to um, get ourselves a little nighttime or rather a, 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 an ultrasonic tip, go in here and then vibrate it out. So in order to do that, what we need to do is we need to modify our axis opening first. So let's go ahead and do that first. Change the axis opening. And the way we do that is by doing the following shape. Let's do this. All right, so now I have a little bit of a space here on the buccal um, aspect of this uh, tooth where I can get in my ultrasonic tip to go in and vibrate this out. Now, talking about ultrasonic tips, as I mentioned, I use the Varios 350 ultrasonic by Brassler. What are the tips that I'm recommending to use for things like this is usually the, um, the E20 or E21. You can also use the E7. Sometimes you can even use the E4 if this is for, uh, if it's pretty far up. The E4 is a good tip. Now you, you can also use one of the tips that actually holds a file. And sometimes the combination of coming in from the side on a lingual direction with an ultrasonic uh, tip that has a file and then from the buckle will certainly loosen it up enough that you could then remove it. So let's go back to the video and uh, take a look at this. So this tooth is now isolated and ready to go. As you can see, there's cavity in the access opening from the original 
uh, instrumentation. Now the cavity is removed, and I've used a little section to remove fluid that's in the canal. And here it is at higher magnification. You can see that little file in there broken. And as you can see, it's towards the buccal aspect of the tooth. So it is kind of putting pressure on the buccal aspect, probably due to some kind of a hidden curvature in the tooth. And you can almost see that figure eight shape in the uh, coronal part of the tooth that reflects that depression that you can see further down inside the tooth. First, I'm using the E14D tip here, and I'm just uh, using it with a lot of water to create a little bit of a channel and a little platform on the buccal aspect of where the instrument is visible. I'm also going on the lingual aspect and uh, just expanding the axis opening. Here, the key is to make sure that your axis opening a little bit farther up on the incisal edge of the tooth for having a little bit of a straighter line axis. Using a little microsuction here to clean and uh, to remove the fluid. And again, you can see that we now have a little bit of a rounder um, area right above the broken instrument. You can see the triangular shape of the cross section of the instrument fairly well. And as I mentioned before, uh, the figure eight shape of the cross section of the canal. I'm using the E11 tip here on Brassler's Varios 350. And with a file that's in it, this is a size 15 file. And all I'm doing is I'm going on the lingual aspect of the file. And I'm trying to transfer some of that ultrasonic energy towards the broken instrument from the lingual aspect. I'm just doing this by going up and down, up and down, and uh, having the water on and trying to transfer the ultrasonic energy into the file. After using that, you can see that we now can see our uh, broken instrument fragment a little bit better, and it is fairly loose now in the canal, a little bit looser. It's moving around. This is an E7 uh, tip, which is a little bit thinner than the uh, E14D. And you can see that I'm moving the tip of the broken instrument with this uh, ultrasonic tip. Now I use it dry for a little while and then I start using it with water. It's important to use the water because the water is itself a medium for carrying the ultrasonic energy into the file as well as it helps remove the debris. A lot of people advocate the use of the ultrasonic dry, and I'm certainly not one of those. You can use it dry for a little while to see what you're doing, but then you have to stop and use the water. Now, this is another little trick, using a headstrom file. And what the headstrom file does is by going on the side of the broken instrument, trying to push towards the broken instrument, and then bringing the uh, headstrom up, you're helping to dislodge that broken uh, segment and hopefully remove it. This was a trick that was originally used quite a bit with silver points, where you would use one, two, or sometimes th 